Okay, so this is the question. It says, a uh, small block of some mass. Um, I like to work things out algebraically, uh, delay plugging in numbers as long as possible, because uh, it, it, because it's a uh, it's it's been useful in many different cases for me. That uh, that that's a, that's my general habit. Unless there's some good reason to just plug in numbers. So some block of mass m starts at rest at this point A, and it slides to a point B where I'm given the speed here. So let me just uh, make a notation in the diagram so that I have some sense of information that I'm given, VB. Then slides along the horizontal surface, a uh, distance of 10 meters, no, distance D before coming to rest at C. Okay. Um, and it asks, uh, without any intro, <laughs> what is the work of friction along the curved surface? Uh, so this is where I'm hoping you remember enough of your physics 4A that when it says the phrase work, that it reminds you of the, the things that you learned about work. So there are really two key things that you should remember now about work and should continue to remember forever about work is when we say work, it can be described in two ways. It can be described one uh, through its uh, definition. In physics 4A, we define the work as force dot product, inner product with the displacement. That's one way to describe work. And if that's all you remember, you'll quickly see looking at this, like, what do you do with that? There's nothing you can do. That's why you should remember the second description of work. You might call this the significance of work. This is why work is important. Whenever you have amount of work that describes a change in energy, it represents a transfer of energy. So what I'm going to guess is this, because they're telling us the height, uh, not in the text, but you know, they are telling us the height and, and you know, initially my initial speed was zero and they are telling us the final speed. And I'm guessing if I looked at the total amount of energy at point A and total amount of energy at point B, I'm going to guess that the total mechanical energy will be different. Uh, at A, there should be more mechanical energy than point B. So, so with this particular property of work in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate that difference in the energy from point A to B to the work done by friction, work done by a non-conservative force that I can blame on for the mechanical energy changing. And, and that must be what the hint meant by um, use uh, work uh, kinetic energy formula or work kinetic energy theorem in at least one part of the question. So, so let me write out that expression. I'm going to say the change in energy or um, the energy at point B minus energy at point A. And I'm saying energy, but I really mean just mechanical energy, uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy. So let me write out energy, um, mechanical energy at point B, that should be potential energy plus the kinetic energy at point B. I'm just writing uh, schematic things to make sure I don't forget anything minus the energy at point A, that would be uh, the potential energy at point A and uh, kinetic energy at point A. And there are some quantities that are just zero from the start, so I can cross them out. So if I set this point as my reference height, y equals zero, then I can say, oh, potential gravitational potential energy at point B, that's zero. So I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, kinetic energy, I'll have to write that out. And at point A, initial speed was zero. It starts at rest. So I can say kinetic energy at point A was zero. Okay, that all seems to work out. So let me uh, write out the simplified version of this while plugging in the expressions for kinetic energy and gravitational energy.
kinetic energy is one half mass times the speed at uh, B squared. So it's good that I have that minus the potential energy is, uh, uh, I hope you remember the expressions for things like a gravitational potential energy. If you're near the surface of the earth, so you can treat the gravitational acceleration as constant, then this should be mgh. So hope you remember that. <laughs> if not, you should uh, look it up in the textbook. Um, so potential energy at point A is mgh. And, um, and from this uh, relationship that I pointed out earlier, what we would say is all this combination is equal to the amount of work done by friction. So, so yeah, and I think when you actually plug in the numbers, um, you should get a negative answer. And whenever you have a negative answer, um, there's always the question of, you know, do you just uh, answer the positive quantity here or do you include a sign? Um, for this particular question, I would probably start by um, putting in the answer with the sign because it didn't say absolute value, it didn't say magnitude. And with work, the sign is meaningful. When it's negative, it means uh, uh, energy was taken out. So I would try putting in with a minus sign and if the system says it's incorrect, I'll just flip the sign, make it positive. <laughs> That, that's one of the reasons you have infinite number of tries. Because here, I think it's a little bit ambiguous if a sign is uh, meant to be included or not. But um, so here on the left-hand side, you have all the numbers for all the quantities here. G is 9.8 meter per second squared. So plug in all the numbers. Um, yeah, and, uh, just you, you know how to do that. I don't have to do it. Part B asks, uh, oh, now part B uh, is talking about the horizontal surface. So what is the coefficient of friction along the horizontal surface? Um, all right. Um, we are told that it came to rest at C. So we know that um, speed final here is equal to zero. That seems meaningful because with that information, I can calculate energy at point C, oh, which is zero <laughs> with this reference point. And so I'm gonna have another additional change in energy. So, which then I can use to calculate the work done with the friction. Oh, I guess then this is probably the place where I need now this relationship. Because uh, once I figure out the work done by friction from B to C, then I can, I know the displacement, this is my Delta X, then from that, I can figure out what the friction force was and it's the average friction force was from point B to C. And the one final piece of information that you need to remember from physics 4A is the expression for the friction force. That it's the, uh, so if it's kinetic friction, it's the coefficient of uh, kinetic friction times the normal force. And here, if you want, you can draw a free body diagram you know, downward mg, upward normal force. It's not accelerating vertically, so normal force must be equal to mg in this case. So you have the expression for friction force in terms of the uh, coefficient of kinetic friction and all the other quantities you know. So now you can solve, once you know friction force from here, <laughs> from having known the work and the displacement, then you can work your way backward to solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction. So, so let me leave that to you. I, I don't think I need to do that for you. You are in physics 4C, <laughs> you are familiar with this. But you know, depending on how long ago you took physics 4A, you might need a reminder of expressions like this. And um, this is, is a careful balance that you have to draw, which is, um, so, you know, you know, I do try to discourage people from doing things like this, just to memorizing formulas. And, um, and you know, when people ask, people ask or tell me, oh, I don't know what the correct formula to use here is. My usual immediate response is, uh, 
there is no particular formula you need to use or um, there are like first principles you can de derive this from. Uh, that's true in a lot of the cases, one. So I don't want you to just uh, think to yourself, you have to memorize it. Uh, like memorizing individual formulas is a way to success in physics because it's not really. At the same time, I will tell you that, uh, so I have excellent memory and that excellent memory has uh, served me well because I remember <laughs> expressions like this uh, when I need to. And uh, there are times when um, you can just look it up from the book and you know it's not that big of a deal, but um, uh, good memory is good to have. It's, it's not something that you want to over rely on, but um, there are some things in math that you just simply have to have it memorized. <laughs> there are some things in physics where it's good to have it memorized. And um, yeah.